Hey everybody, welcome back. Instructor Phil Mitratis here. So um, what we're going to do in today's class is we're going to go over and we're going to discuss our new assignment that's listed up on the blog. And most important, not to discuss the assignment, but we're going to have a review. Um, I wanted, I like doing these sort of intermediate reviews where you guys are in the middle of modeling a project. We can go back and make sure that all the guidelines are being addressed. And I like to treat it like this because this is something very similar to what you're going to get in a studio environment. We're going to be working on something. You don't want to take it to a finished end. You want to rough it out, show it to somebody, get approval on it, and then keep going forward with your design. You don't want to work all the way to an end and find out you get you know five pages of notes and you have to change something, and it's something that they didn't like or want to change. So under our, our vehicle concept here, remember, um, I remember I said the cockpit can be last. Okay, um, I'm more concerned about the design and feel of the vehicle. But we definitely wanted a canopy, light, some type of, and then landing pad pegs or some type of feet to allow the vehicle to land, okay? All right, so with that said and done, just to go over that. Um, so I'm going to take a look at some of the work you guys put up. Some of you guys gave me your reference as well. Okay, so Mr. Arp, here's sort of your rough pass, your rough model of this. Okay, let's come in here. Right, there's a couple things I already noticed in here. That's a low-res photo, so just bear with me. But um, I'm just going to draw on top of this. And what was funny is I was doing another demo like this earlier today in class. And one of the things I was talking about in the digital drawing class was looking at reference using parts of the reference that you see to guide you along into your design process. Okay, and so one of the great things about gathering reference like this is getting a good idea on how things are work. So let's just start with this piece of reference right here. One of the immediate things that I notice inside this piece, and there's nothing wrong with writing notes on this, okay? This is why we, oops, hold on. Let me back down there for a minute. Let's go back to brush. My brush is like super sized, and I don't know why. Hold on. I know why, because the, okay, hold on. We got a little technical difficulty. One second. All right, technical issues resolved. Okay, so when I look at this piece of reference, these are the things I look for in anything I do or design, whether drawing, concept art, modeling, I always gather reference. In fact, the demo I did earlier today in the digital drawing class was based off of creating what I call a reference sheet. Some people call them mood sheets. It's to put together a bunch of reference that you can access very quickly, things that are inspiring you. So here's one of the first things I notice in this, is you see this line right here? There is a massive line in this build that is curving down in that direction, okay? I think that's really cool because it's getting us to branch off of this. This is a 90 degree angle. 90 degree angles are boring and they're stiff and nothing in design is really gonna work with that. So when I look at this, look at that huge angle that's there. Now these wings, now the one thing I can't tell is it looks, I see the, the jet turbines in here and I see how it's connected, but I can't tell in this illustration or this piece of concept art whether I'm imagining the body might move up and down in order to adjust for the wings. Now, if that doesn't happen, maybe only the jet turbines move and then the body stays locked in like this. But what's nice about that body shape right now is that body shape is at what I call an acuse or obtuse angle, which are just good, simple basics for designing. We're avoiding 90 degrees. So having the ship shape like that. Now, the only thing that's weird is I wonder how would that ship land? So one of your responsibilities in your model is going to give me some form of a landing pad or landing gear for your ship. Now, if this thing was balanced right, it could have something that came down there, and then maybe it has something like a hydraulic that comes out back here. That could work, right? And it could land. But that's something to think about because the physics of that particular angle would have to make sense where if it comes into land and that ship does not bend and it stays at this 90 degree angle, that's pretty important. Here's another thing too that's really cool is I talked about the term contrapposta the other day, which comes from figure drawing. So when you draw the figure and you put the figure in motion, as soon as you go ahead and stand up and do this, as soon as you arch the hips into one weight, the shoulders counterbalance that and you get this. And that's those type of angles. I also call those counter angles when I'm designing. So if I draw an environment, and I place a river or a, let's say a rocky bedway at this angle, I want to counter that angle with another design. Whoever drew this is doing that in here. If you look right here, they have this sort of angle going that way, and then they have this angle that way. It's very similar to sort of contrapasta, having these sort of counter angles inside the design, which is adding a lot to the overall design. The other thing I think that's really cool in here 
is look at these verticals that are going down, okay? In compositions, verticals, now I know these are going sort of horizontal in an angle, but these straight lines emphasize power. It's like a, gr a group of soldiers holding a, a large sword and they're all standing next to each other. So if you see movies where you might have like a bunch of Roman soldiers and they all have the long battle spears or they have the long swords, right? They're all in vertical. When you place numerous verticals next to each other, it always implies strength and power. So if I were to write on here little notes, my number one note would be, uh-oh, how that? Okay, my number of the brush went huge. My number one note would be this counter angle right here in the body and then also the counter angle in the back right here, okay? The back wings, the back fins, and then up here on the side. The other thing that I noticed too is that if I had to look at this at a top view, the body's like this and the wings are doing this, they're going sort of out. The wings are not coming straight across, okay? Then of course I have those verticals, so that might be my second note in there, okay? Let's come over and let's take a look at this guy here. All right, first read off of this. Very big, beefy, robust, military type of vehicle. This doesn't feel like a stealth fighter, okay? This feels like a vehicle that was designed to get into the middle of the battle, take a lot of punches, okay, take a lot of hits and still be able to retain. It has um, a good, you know, mecha gun mechanism up here. Looks like it can carry lots of missiles. So, again, let's talk about angles in here, what's happening. Look at this. Let me put another layer here, okay? Look at this huge angle that's coming across right here. Um, as I look at this, here is the normal sort of straight angle, the 90, I would call it. Okay, this is the main body that's going across with this going across, and you can see how that recedes back to a vanishing point, right? Look at the decision to come in here and place in this huge angle right there, okay, of the wings going back. By angling that in there, we're now creating a nice obtuse angle, which is changing part of the, the overall design. When we look at the wings going in the opposite direction, so if the wings were coming back in this direction, okay, and they were going back to, oops, to a vanishing point, you're going to notice that the, these wings right here, you see that? They are not going straight across, are they? They are pitched at an angle going downward like this. There's an angle there of about 20 degrees. And then the wings are also angling here. That's huge. That means we're avoiding, again, the 90 degree angle and this designer is pitching things at angles. So look at that. You have the angles back here being pitched. You have some back here. You have it here in the major wings and you have it here in this major support wing in the back. That's huge, okay? Another aspect that I notice in here is look at the cockpit. Now, this is something I like to do. I've been drawing a lot of ships because I've been modeling some stuff at home. Look at the angles that are taking place in here. Okay, you get these really fun sort of hardcore angles. By having these little points to that angle, making them feel like little pointy um, spear tips, that's going to increase that feeling of um, threat from this vehicle. Okay, it's going to emphasize the design a little bit more. All right. The other thing, too, I notice is look at the fuselage on the body. Look at what it's doing. It's coming down here and then it's curving, and then it's curving here. It has these nice sort of angled feels to it uh, that you see a lot of times when you look at reference like the M1 Abrams tank. Um, it has these deflective little fields. Some of that deflection is used for radar, but it's also some of it's used for, you know, if incoming bullets or missiles hit at the right angle, they bounce off, okay? Um, I like that in here. I like these hard-edged angles that are sort of happening in here. Now, if I were to go through and dissect these, I would look at them. That angle feels much greater than a 90, okay? And even looking at this, that feels like, a, like it's coming off of the body here that's receding back. That feels like it's probably at 30 or 40 degree. It's in perspective, so it's being foreshortened there. And then after it gets here and rounds back here, that's still greater than a 90. So what the guy, the artist is not doing is they're not doing a lot of that. They're doing a lot of this. Again, they're going for obtuse and acute angles and part of the design, okay? So uh, the other thing I like on this is look at the, um, the enormous, so if I were to write down little clues here, I'd write step number one, again, high angles in here, offset angles, okay? Step number two, look at the angles in the body. Step number three, look at the giant size of those engines, okay? I've seen some helicopters, real helicopters that have smaller engines. 
You know, engines are very powerful, but you know what? I like the feel of this being exaggerated a little bit more because it feels like a giant beast, doesn't it? And it's the same principle. Look, if you pull up and if you type in, um, I've always loved planes. I think it's the A1 Warthog. Okay, look at the engines on this guy right here. Look at what a beastie feel that thing has. And when you see this plane coming through the sky, all right, fully loaded with missiles, that thing is terrifying. Okay, I actually was hiking in Kern, uh, Kern River. I was up on a hill, and two of these did a flyby about 1,000 feet above the ground. And we were hiking, and you, just, you didn't even hear them coming. You just heard this, <laughs> and they just passed by, and I, like, jumped out of my, my pants and almost poop in my pants because I was it just scared my wife jumped like five feet high and almost ran for a tree because it was just so freaky but I mean when you look at the designs that are in here those big engines I like how that's being transferred over to here okay so I mean there's probably some influence in that looking at this type of attack plane but again what looks boring to me is you know this is just it's something we've already seen the very straight edges in there versus this has a lot of angles and it feels really cool okay I also like these little rivets these little details inside that, it makes it feel very heavy, it makes it feel like it's made of iron. Technically, you here's a it's more of a design aesthetic where you know a lot of helicopters and ships that are made, you're not gonna see those rivets because they're aerodynamic, but we put them in the model because it makes it feel in terms of design heavy and fortified and thick, right? That's why you do that. Okay, so Mr. Arp, when I come back here and I take a look at your design, one of the first things that I noticed just looking at this from a top view is you're almost a, hold on a minute, what happened there? Let me turn off this. You're almost at 90 degree right here. You see that? Hold on, brush. Let's go here. There we go. Let's make this a little bit larger. You're almost a 90 degree angle right there. You see that? So one of my first comments on this would be taking this and angling back that wing structure somehow or trying another version of what would happen if they come out that way. If you get this sort of wedge shape in here, which is very, uh, looks very similar to like a predator. What I mean by predator, like a snake, like the head of a, of a rattlesnake, you know, venomous snake, you get to have a very sort of angular design to their bodies. I would incorporate that in here. Right now, that's way too, too straight right there. I would definitely get rid of part of what you have there. Um, let's take a look at this from another view. Okay, top view. Here I really see it too. Too straight. That should have a nice angle or curve back somehow. Um, let me see. Let me come back here too. Let's go back and see what else. We don't have a... Well, I have those two views, right? Yeah. So I was sort of wondering from a low, a low view, this feels very straight down here. Even though it's a light curve, it feels like it's a straight fuselage going straight across. I, yeah, so if it's straight right now and I come back over here, Look at these, look at this, look at those huge curves on that arch in there. I would definitely get some high angles in there and I would be pitching that and avoid the straightness. And again, what's the reason why I'm talking about that is straightness is going to get associated with a vertical right there and probably right there, which is a 90 degree and a 90 kills it. Okay, so if you were to draw this from a side view, let's say perhaps where the main engine is here, the engine is maybe like this, instead of being straight, Maybe you pitch it at a little bit of an angle, like so. Okay, hold on a minute. Let me erase my, get my eraser a little smaller. So imagine it being a little bit more like this. Then you might have the engines in there, and then the front maybe comes forward and then dips a little bit, and maybe you have this type of angular progression taking place, you know, where you're getting in here and you're going thicker to smaller type of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we're avoiding 90s 100% right now. And then also I've noticed your fin back here, straight across. So when you get to this fin back here, um, I wouldn't have it go straight across. That's just going to kill it. That's going to flatten part of the design. Maybe you can angle it down a little bit more. Maybe this angles up a teeny bit like so. And when I go back and look at that reference, you can see they're not doing that whatsoever. This is sort of going down. I mean, it's going across here, but the majority of the body is then angled down at a pretty large angle. And then look at the angle of those fins. So if I come back to part of your design, I would think about, you know, avoiding these straights. Even in here, look, you got other large straights, another large straight there. 
you got another straight here. It's like avoid all, even this is straight. You know, eventually what you should do in here is, um, hold on, I didn't put another layer on here, my bad, let me back up. What I would do in here is I would think of this body maybe being like this and going from here and basically being a little thicker somehow and getting thinner like that. Okay. Thicker that, that blends here, that blends into the body structure. Maybe, I like this curve that you have in there. Maybe you could shift that over a little bit, pull it back and then see what would happen if you get another type of curve up in here like that. Okay, how that changes the design. And then also to avoid the straight line, if just look at that going across, that just also just sort of kills it, you know? All right. Hold on, I'm command Z and something weird happened. What's going on? Yeah, cancel, hold on. So um, with that straight line going across, maybe you need to think about having something more like this. Maybe this has to be at a light angle, and then it comes forward and has sort of a, a nose like this maybe, and then the engines jet out a little bit, right? And then maybe the body sort of comes back here ducks in and then maybe it pulls out where the exhaust is and you have that type of a look instead. Avoid those straights, okay? And I think just that's what I would infer off of those designs. Now, I tend to get a little bit more particular more particular than the average person, but that's, you know, those are sort of the comments that I would throw at you. I look for little design elements other artists have figured out and I just want to incorporate that into my own. And again, you want to use those as a stepping stone to guide you to a new direction, okay? Cool, I'll try to speed up a couple of these. All right, Fabs, let's take a look at what you have, okay? Uh-oh, I have some weird, is that distorted, Fabs? Uh, yeah. uh, okay, hold on, I know how to fix this. It's the uh, aspect ratio correction, there it goes. All right, there we are, okay? Um, window view, there we go, stretches it out a little bit here, and then we did that one, that's mine. Okay, so one of the things I comment, like, what are your reference, what are you going for here? Yeah, I have my reference. That's okay, so let's just talk about this real quick. One of the first things I noticed, again, is look at this very hard straight edge in here, straight across. See that? Oops. Hold on, what's going on today? I'm hitting Command-Z and it's flipping my image. I have no idea why. Huh? I, yeah, it's my, it's Maya's curse that comes with everything else. No, um, I think my hotkeys are messed up from another instructor. But look, here's what's key to me is, look, I have a straight line going there. I have another straight there. I have a straight, a straight, a straight, a straight, a straight. See what I mean? Too many straights. I need to get some curves in there, some angles. And we were talking about counter angle just a minute ago. If this goes across, Something right here might pitch up, and then that might go downward in this direction to here. That might come back here, and then it might go from larger, you know, out like this. I like what you have in the foreground here, excuse me, in the front, but I want to enhance this a little bit and make it feel a little bit more, a little larger and a little bit more um, threatening and part of the design. But not the scale, though. I don't want it to feel like it's only two people and then the body's super small, so I might find a way to shrink down part of the cockpit size. And then maybe the rest of this is some type of lights or other detail or mechanism in there. Okay, but the first thing that I noticed right from the beginning was there's just a lot of straight edges in there. And you gotta be careful in your design. I noticed here too, these aren't doing anything for me. Those feel like pen caps. I don't know what those are, but they're, they're 90 degree angles that are coming in there that aren't really matching. Imagine if I came in here and if I had this. Uh oh, put another layer on here. Let's take off a lot. Imagine if I came in here and I had a nice curve shape. Hold on, I lost my red. If I have a nice organic that comes up like this, let me draw a center line for it. Maybe it, it comes around, it rounds a little here and then comes to the back here. So if I were to draw a see-through view of it, it might come down and do this type of thing. See that? How interesting that starts to look, having a nice round curve, organic shape on there. 
So I'm, I'm getting these round edges, which are going to feel more like they're going to associate with fast. When we think of fast cars, we think of Porsches, we think of a lot of other vehicles that have rounded corners, not a ton of hard edges on them. So, and, and then again, this just, I would dump those. Those aren't, they look like something weird. Get the box. So look, if, even if I put that there right now, and just watch. If I take that, copy and paste that, and put that over here. Do you feel how the difference already? Yeah. And just the shape? And then if you get a little bit of an angle in here and avoid those hard edges, that's really going to push the design and give you a much better feel for what you're going for, okay? And if you don't know how to model a complex shape like that in Maya, I will show you. Just let me know and I'll do a demo for it. It's really easy. It's just using base mesh. You can take a really part of a real simple sphere, okay, crush it down, thin, thin down the input selection, and we can stretch it across, and then smooth it, and you'll get a nice smooth, like, engine cover like that, okay? All right. Okay, one second. Hung. Let's see what you got here. Okay. All right. Cool. We got some reference up here. So when I first look at this, what do you guys, um, some nice angles in here, aren't there? Peter's like, what the, what, what? Comments? They're great. They're really wonderful angles taking place. Let's take a look at the reference really quick, okay? All right, so taking a look here, um, look at that. One of the first things I notice when I look at this guy immediately is I really like these angles in here angle that's sort of streaming across right there um, and that the cockpit I like how it goes up and then it sort of comes down as like a larger shape here smaller shape there they're not middles they're not equals they're di you know one smaller one's a little bit larger this is fantastic too look at this guys look at how you have that design of that engine back here now it's not in this shape anymore is it traditional shape that we see with our fighters it is in a really cool, wonderful sort of triangle-based shape. In fact, triangles really work fantastic with any type of designing that you're doing, especially with ships and vehicles, okay? Uh, they just look a little bit more futuristic. And what I really like about it is this curved uh, angle that's in here and the length of that, how it comes forward and then sort of dips like this. Doesn't it sort of look like a spear, the front end of it? See the front end, you have this this wedge shape in there. What, what do spears look like? What do they do? They're for killing. And they, and they go fast. You hum a spear and it's like, and it sticks in. So that was a real smart design premise to put that in there. Look at how nice it is. And then here's something else they're doing, which is really cool. You can do this. I like to do this on my sketchbook all the time. Okay. Is they're contrasting with shape. And this is how he's doing it. Okay. Let me erase this. He's putting body pieces like this that are flat open and then he's coming underneath and then he's putting all the detail like this it's a great way to work it's just another design approach see that down here once you drop underneath this it's all like little round gears and little plates and everything and then up above it is all the the nice round exposed plates that make up the fuselage and everything there's nothing wrong with that that's instant contrast, okay? There's so many different ways. In my sketchbook the other day, I was coming up with um, all these different ways. I'll show it to you, I'll bring you to the next class. I've been drawing a ton of spaceships and mechs because one of my, for my graduate thesis, one of the things I'm doing is I'm modeling a bunch of ships, I'm sculpting them in, um, it, well, in Maya, and then I'm gonna be making a lot of them through kit bashing techniques, and then some of them I'm gonna get printed out. So my whole idea for my grad show is to have the ships and the designs of the vehicles in front, and then paintings of everything behind them. Okay, so that's something that I've been sort of developing. Let me go back to my brush here. So um, this is nice. I get to bring in one of the things I talked about uh, in my sketchbook. I make these little notes to myself, little design things that I stumble across. One of them is contrast. And the, one of the easiest things, mentioned this before, some of you that hand me on uh, the Super Soaker rifle, we talked about contrast to shape is when you have a large detailed element or shape like this, you come into that shape and then you put a bunch of little noodle details around that. And what that does is it gets part of this shape to pop and become an interesting part of the design. And then these little 
noodle elements support the weight of that. And I think that's a really good example of what's happening in here. And then even just coming in and any of you that do any off-roading or anything, look at the, you put like little Nerf bars. See that? Like a little bar on the side there, like a little protective bar. So maybe if that thing's flying or in a speed race, it's not, you know, it's like a little bumper to protect it. I think that's a, a great little idea to throw in there. Okay. Um, other little things. Look at this. Here, there's a lot more, there's some more straight lines in here, but there are some light angles in there. What's fine. What I really like about this, hung, and maybe that's the reason why you grabbed it, is look at that massive shape in there. See how that dominates the body shape? It's like, bam, that's such a big shape. It makes it feel heavy. It makes it feel weighted. Okay, that vehicle right there is not what you use in a pod race or something to go really fast. That thing feels like it is made to pick up a bunch of troops and slowly approach on a battlefield and just destroy and rip things up. That means it was a great design. If I'm getting that visual read from it right now, that's fantastic. Does that ship right there feel like it was made to withstand a lot? The lower one? No, it doesn't. That ship feels like it was made and designed to be fast, to be efficient. It, it looked as a cannon on it. It might even have missiles that will drop out. But that thing is made to fly and to go fast. That's not made to stay around in battle. And again, good design choices. Look at, when we look at here, look at that thin, long, triangled spear shape right here. It almost looks like, I forget what the name of it is, there's an official name for it, but it almost looks like the, the Roman sword that they used in, the short sword used in battle, there was a name for it. And it was used, there's a, a Roman name for it, it was used for punching through uh, your, your, um, your enemy's plate, steel. It had a really sharp point to it. So just looking at it, look at that sharp point in the design. And then look at the counter angles in here. Look at this, how that goes back to that. That is not at a 90, is it? Not at all. That is a, a huge obtuse angle in there. And then again, look at these fun designs. They're almost like two triangles stacked on top of each other with a tilt to them. That really adds a lot to what's taking place there. Okay, so let's go back, take a look at what Hung's design here. So, um, Hung, I think this is looking really good. Uh, one of the things I'm noticing is a little bit of competition between the thicknesses here and here, and then the thicknesses here. You see that? I would have one of them become the, the, the more definitive shape. I would maybe lengthen this midsection wider and then have the wings become supporting elements. Or I would do the opposite, make the wings be the wider part, look like it's made to make this thing hover, and then the back here where the fuselage is or the main... Um, deck of the ship becomes a little bit smaller. Okay, I think that'll help. I, this right here, that is a beautiful shape there, my friend. It is sort of triangle in its structure and it has all these wonderful little elements onto it. I think that's a lot of fun. Um, I like this, you're getting this sort of viper looking head shape to there that's making it feel more threatening and you know more sort of attacking. Now this right here, I might go back into this if that's, that's the thruster, that's the intake for air, right? And then it's like out and then it's, it's like super small for an engine, right? Why not, this is a pretty heavy vehicle. Why not emphasize the size of those thrusters and maybe they're much larger. Maybe they sort of come up at an angle and then they sort of come back a little bit like this. See what I'm getting at here? Those thrusters now that I sketched in feel like they could support the weight of that vehicle, okay? The thrusters right there feel like I'm making cotton candy with them, okay? They're like super small. So, um, and I sort of like that name. This vehicle could be like a Viper of some kind, you know? A question, were you imagining that these wings open up at all? Yeah. So... They can expand this way and maybe perhaps expand back, similar to like a Tomcat, right? So if that's the case, I think that's a great design sensibility that when this thing slows down for battle, maybe those wings sort of come forward to keep, give it more lift. At the same time, maybe there could be like, since it slows down, maybe there can be like some type of a round defensive plate or shield. Like a motorcycle rider has big arm pads that they put on right here. They have the, the shoulder pads that they put on. Guys that ride like, you know, dirt bikes, okay, and motocross racing, all that padding. Imagine this vehicle looks like it could come in 
to a battle scene, slow down, open up its wings, and be just flying around, picking people off, I might put a little bit more of some type of a defensive plate that might be on the front there, okay? Um, I, this is really nice. I like this. In fact, I almost want to exaggerate it a little bit more, but I really like the centerline feel that does this to the body. And I'm wondering if we had a side view, it feels like that's a little bit more like this, and then it sort of drops down a little bit like that. Is that what it looks like from the side about? Yeah. I'm wondering what would happen if we increased that a little bit more to maybe like this. See what I'm getting at? Pushing that angle up a little bit more where maybe this pops up a little bit, comes back, and then this goes back like so. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we just get a little bit more of an angled feel to it. Um, just, again, pushing and defining a little bit more. I know you have the capability to come in here and model all this. That's not a problem. But I'm just trying to think of a way to push a couple of your angles and shapes. The other thing, too, is be careful of this. The distance from here to here is almost the same distance from here to here. Okay? You have some similarities in here. The distance from there to there is about the same distance from there to... You know what I mean? From there almost look like they're sort of similar shapes. Why not make one here be shorter? Then when you get to this one, this one is like one large massive piece. And then this one is smaller. It might change up the size variations and make it look a little bit more appealing, okay? Boy, look at that. Isn't that, a, these are just such great shapes back here. Those little thrusters. Just a thought, look at how this is sort of goes across straight like that. Um, by meaning the front view of it like this. What if you found a way to make that a little bit more angled like this? Would that make it look a little bit faster? Okay. All right. Really nice design, Hung. There's a lot of, lot of great information in there. A lot of cool things taking place. Um, I think what you get in there and define a little bit more and then go for the detail pass, I think you'll be spot on. Okay, very nice. Okay. All right, and let's go to another one here. Mr. Kim. All right, I gotta fix some aspect ratio. All right, and you, okay. there we go. All right, let's take a look. One of the things that I immediately noticed, let's talk about niceness and adjustments, right? This is really nice in here, Paul. That's cool shape. That's really cool. Nice angles, working very well, right? The one thing that I'm noticing is how this thing is just like straight across here. Straight across right there, right? Imagine if you did this. Imagine if this came down more and you had this type of arch up and then you get this type of, see what I'm doing? I'm opening and expanding that silhouette. By opening that and keeping it from being so flat, it's enhancing part of the design that you have. That is much more readable than straight across. See what I did? It's like I grabbed the middle of the ship and pulled it up a little bit to get a little bit more of an arch in there. And I, there's two ways you can do that. I think you could either come into this and you could pull this down a little bit or maybe you just come in and decide to pull these shapes up a little and then angle them back down. If we can see a little bit more through there, just be careful that the distance from here to here does not become the same distance as here to here. And it looks like a pair of Ray-Ban sunglasses. See that? Okay, because then it gets too balanced out. So what I would do is think about maybe since this is a large vehicle, I think the thruster in this body becomes the more dominant shape, then this angles and maybe the cockpit gets a little bit smaller type of thing like that. See how that weighs a little bit more? Like that? There's more variation now. This is a much larger shape. That's much, you know, much smaller. It's going to be a better design overall. And then look, just angling that out a little bit and then bringing that out too. It does a lot for the silhouette. You could even, let me check your other views here. 
Yeah, bring this. See how close that is into the body? It's like me doing this with my arms. And be like, yeah, I had a good time. Versus when someone on a roller coaster has a good time, they raise their hand. They're like, woo, you know what I mean? Press that silhouette out. If you arch this guy up like this and then get that engine out here, it's going to do a lot more to enhance part of that. Now, the only way, the only reason why I would think about perhaps not doing that is that if this was uh, a quick shuttle of some kind, I like the engine being in close like that. If I imagined jumping in this as a transport and like getting from a ship down to the planet Earth real quick and it's just going to like, it's just going to shoot me really quick, that makes sense to have it tied in a little bit more. So my question to you is what were you thinking this vehicle was? Okay, because I would think about if it's not meant for battle and it's meant for like a general purpose transition around, it's up to you, but what I like about pushing this shape out a little bit more is it enhances the silhouette shape of the design. It just gives me more read, especially if I draw through to the other side and I imagine the other side having something similar to that going back, you know what I mean? Just like this is. I know that's horrible drawing right there, but I'm just roughing it real quick. You get the point that if I see it on the other side and then maybe making this a little bit thinner up on the top there, okay? All right, um, watch the thickness of this guy here, this little shield thing that comes up. Make sure that's not the same thickness there as it is here, as it is here, as it is here. See what I'm getting at? Maybe make this a little bit smaller back here so when we get down here, this cockpit becomes accentuated, okay? in here and then you know perhaps it things dive in here and they get a little bit more smaller or angled and then it recedes back or something again once I start doing this see what I'm getting in here I'm getting other angled planes that are looking much more uh, they're a lot more fun to go in the composition versus if I come back I probably use all my command Z's there yeah I did but versus what you have right now is this the same the same, the same. See that? So we're going to push outside this, okay? All right? This looks great back here. You got a little door. You have this. You can have those little thrusters in there. You have more there. It feels like that type of ship. Actually reminds me, The remember in uh, Star Trek, their ship to get to the, another ship, it's somewhat similar to this. It just has, huh? It has this feel to it. <laughs> Remember which one I'm talking about? Yeah, I know exactly. It was the last one when he, we took it. and it's like Yeah, it's like a little pod with the two little things. I like that you put another set here. It makes it feel like it could do a little bit more, go a little bit faster. Okay? It's nice work, Paul. Uh, I just would push a little bit of the shapes in there. That's all. Does that help? Yeah. Good. Excellent. Well, actually, I'm glad we're doing this. I'm going to have to do these more of these. Okay. And let's see who's next here. Uh, Tony. Alright. Cool. Let's take a look here. Oh. Alright. What's going on here? Hold on. There we go. I think I hit something and it disappeared there for a minute. Okay, Tony. Um, let's take a look at what you have. Okay, looking at your reference, you have three different sort of vehicles. Yeah. Right? That's like an attack chopper. Stealthy attack chopper, right? That looks like it could be... doesn't quite feel military with that yellow stripe in it. It reminds me like it could be transport or maybe, you know, lifting. Like it lifts up. It's got big engines on it. Can lift stuff up, move again, type of transport, right? Um, and definitely when I look at that guy, a uh, cool model, but it reminds me of like a little junk collector, you know, type of, right? Yeah. yeah. So when I, I'm looking at that, I'm just like, cool, it looks like he stacks a bunch of junk in there and he drives this little like big Mac, it looks like a Mack truck with that front end. And he puts that around a model, okay? <clears throat> so one of my questions for you would be, which, what end do you want to go to? Um, 
when I see that rear door, that rear door at an angle like that, immediately in my my visual library makes me associate this with a army transport or military transport. The big door that opens up, you can roll tanks and stuff in there. So if that's the case, I'm imagining this guy having much larger engines, perhaps even two engines. He might even have more control engines. You might have another wing up in the front with a set of engines on them. Okay, and then he might have a large engine in the back to help control the weight. If he's loading, and I saw the mech there that you did, so if he's loading mechs and vehicles in there, it's going to be a heavy, thick ship, right? We want to have, a, I might put a little bit more in terms of thrust. That's just like a one, a oneer, you know, one single tube there, and it might feel a little, if I can intensify the feel of that. I, I'm just sort of curious what would happen if you came in here. Let me just try this real quick. Oh, I can see my arm is blocking my own. Let's see what I can do it this way. Ah. That's what I was wondering, is if you had that guy there. Maybe up in the front, like that, a little smaller. And what if that guy got a little larger in the back? It gives it a little bit more weight and power, right? Just an idea. You can go either way, OK? Um, I really like. You're doing something really cool with the design. You're giving it this big sort of front end, this, I don't want to say brute, but it feels strong, like brute front end. It's like, uh, 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 and then it sort of comes down. Now watch, you know, when I'm looking at these, I think what's really attractive in some of this is that B cove multiple polygonal face that's sort of coming down. So you can maybe, you know, if you wanted to, you can get some of that in here a little bit. Yeah, I want you to do your own design, you know, use these, use the reference to guide you along. But what I do like about this, you didn't look at anything Russian, did you? Uh, it, re it has, a, the front end of this has that Russian feel. Yeah, doesn't it? You know what I'm talking about here? You guys, the, the Russians and the Chinese have some really fantastic Russian... They have some really fantastic design sensibilities, the things that we've never seen before. And it's almost like with a personality. I just imagine this really strong, you know, Russian, like, you know, we don't take your shit, America, right? You know what I mean? And just this huge, massive, I mean, when you look at some of their, even the MiGs and some of the designs that they have, they have um, these really fantastic curves on them. Actually, I should have typed in helicopter. Yeah, see that weighted front end on that thing? This is the one I was wanting to get. Oh, look at that. Look at that. The way it's split with those huge engines, you know what I mean? That reminds me of yours a little bit, your sort of front and all those little windows on there. I heard Russia was like selling their some of the military stuff. Look at that one. That's one of their attack copters they have. Look at the roundness here, the round up there. It's pretty awesome looking. Um, I, look at that bubble shape there. That's the same one in the side view, right? Some good reference right there. So um, I'm getting that brute feel to part of this in here. Um, I like this possibility of a can right there. I would maybe design that and I would definitely break it away from here. Look, that's right there, almost like right up to the edge. If that's going to be some type of dual cannon, I would maybe try to find that and make it come out like Poseidon's trident, you know, or like or like a pitchfork that feels more threatening. And maybe after this comes down, you can either snub nose it, which makes it look very heavy and sort of brutal, okay, or 
you can even possibly maybe extend this out thinner and make it look like it's some type of radar instrument or something. But I'd find something to do. I'm a little iffy about the positioning of these guys right here. I'm trying to think of another way, the, another place to put these. My question for you is where are they? Are they cannons? Are they, you know, if this is a transport ship, what would those, are they turbines? Huh? So if you're going for that round shape and part of the decor, I think they'd be cool, but then i ditch this part up here. Make it look like it's round and some type of the fuselage comes out and becomes round. I think that could be really cool. If you're going to go for the cannons, then have them stand out with the confidence to look and feel like they are a cannon. Okay, that they are, you know, they're protected. Um, notice this view right here. Okay, that this thickness in the body and then... That wing just feels so thin, like it would snap off. I would give that that wing, I'd make it a little bit thicker. And then by by enlarging part of that size, it adds a lot more visual weight. And it feels, just that right there, the size of that feels a lot heavier. The other thing too is I would pull that wing out, especially here in the back view. It looks like that's such a small amount of, of wing space. Yeah, it feels like this thing would barely fly. It'd be like... Be like, don't stand up in the middle of flight because then it would tilt to the side and roll over. So by adding those wings and making those wings really come out on that with a huge engine in there, it's really going to give it a lot of weight and make it feel like you want this thing, it's brute, remember? You want it to feel like this thing could battle in the middle of a storm and deal. it could transport and move troops through any conditions and be able to come down and land, take on fire, and so on. Okay? All right. Good. You're on your way. Okay? All right, and I'll do a couple here. Okay, David. So um, most of these here, they all look like medium-sized fighters, you reference, right? This guy, what is it? This is an escort cruiser, okay? It's, but then this is different right here. Right? Is that the reverse view? Oh, what a trip. It's so much wider here than it looks there. And I, that, that width in it here doesn't feel like it's in there. But even though this is a cruiser, it reminds me of sort of like those the small uh, Navy ships we have that accompany destroyers and you should know being in the navy right <laughs> right i mean but the, the little destroyers are actually loaded with a bunch of firepower yeah. right and they could take out quite a few things and that it's funny that you picked that because i wonder if that has any sensibility with your history of being in the navy yeah uh, absolutely of course i mean you have to being you were in a ship and being around all that environment military and all the designs i mean absolutely that's going to come out so um when I come back here and look at what you have right now, um, I'm definitely getting a fighter feel coming out of this. I think, especially, I think this is really nice in here. This is, let me add another layer on. I think this is a really fun design element is you really have this weighted nicely. These thrusters come out and they're very heavy. You know, there's a lot of weight to them. They feel like they, they can really hold part of the ship up. Um, on this reverse view, I really start to like how this is breaking out of the silhouette in the back. And so maybe if we see, I can't really see in the three quarters, I see them a little bit here. But maybe if it just angles down a little bit more and they come out to about here. Yeah, just an attachment or something like it's coming out a little. That It's going to help when anything spreads around from the center mass, it's going to help emphasize the silhouette shape and the read of that object. I think that'd be really cool. Again, I think this is really powerful right here. Here, you don't have it with much thickness. I would come in here, like I saw it here, I'm imagining a whole engine behind it that's almost like armor played over it. So this engine system that you're imagining right in here, I might have it come out and be like in here and then increase this plating. It goes over. I mean, that really looks like this is a really fantastic angle in here, that planing. You, you, the plating, excuse me, you're listening to what I'm talking about with obtuse and acute angles, that's really reading well and it's going to develop into a nice little piece of, of mesh in there. Um, 
the, the only one thing I'd be careful of on this, and I was a little iffy, is that I like the front cockpit a lot. It, it sort of reminds me of a turtle head. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay? It does. That's the first read I got. The only problem is, is when I look at, like, a little, uh, a little turtle head, they're so, like, what's the word? Hold on a minute. They're so, like, thin. Yeah. And if this is an attack vehicle, I might find a way to enhance the thickness of this a little bit more. Um, yeah. The top nut one. Uh huh. The Thor. I wanted to yeah. find like, like the cockpit was how it is right now, and then I want to add something to that to make it look like Thor. Well, you look at it like this, man. Look at what this is. This thing is like from here and then goes bam. That thing becomes thick and heavy right there. So if you're going to go for that, when you come back into this, your side view here, you have to do that 100 per Oops. <laughs> You have to do that, hold on, I'm telling it to delete, there it goes. You have to do that 100% here. Right now, you're going thick to thin. You're doing the opposite of what that Thor did. So if you're going to go that Thor, maybe you decide to thin this out a little bit, and then once you get to here, then it's beginning to become, then you're going to have the cockpit like in here, and then you're going to get that thick, heavy feel. Look at that. That feels like a freaking club that a caveman would use to like kill another caveman, right? That's what you want it to feel. You don't want it to feel like it's a little, you know, badminton tennis racket head or something, right? You know what I'm saying? And then, look, you can incorporate, if you get that thinner feeling up here, and then it gets wider, and then wider, and that thing becomes this beast like this. Okay, then I pull out the silhouette a little bit and have that other shape in here. So now you're in a whole other another shape category. It's still going for the direction you're going in. So, I mean, I think I would adjust that. If that's what you're going for, I would just enlarge part of that. But this is very nice in here, there. And um, I think it's working well. I did notice this. Watch a little bit of your the distance from here to here is you have that width. You have like that width. You have about that width, that width. There's some similarities being recurring there. Don't be afraid to thin things down and group them. And what I mean by that is like if you took this guy here, and put it closer and made it thinner, and it wraps around, this now becomes part of a grouping to the center mass there. Okay. See what well, I mean? Yeah, I group that together as one group. Then you spread this out, and that becomes its own independent object. That will See what I mean? That way you have a large shape here, visual read one, secondary shape two. Okay, so they're not competing with each other. The one thing that you have to watch is... You know, that's competing with that, and that's about the same thickness as that. You get a lot of repetition of similar shapes. Would I use, like, the support scale tool to bring in those two lenses? Or here? Yeah, don't doubt that. Um, I don't know. Is there one right I'd have to look at the mesh. It depends how you made it. Did you make it a separate piece or one piece? So if it's all one piece of mesh, I might go in there and actually... I know where it might be and delete it and then add another piece of mesh or find a way to move it over to the body, okay. you know. So um, there's nothing wrong with, since that is a part under the main fuselage, is having that as a separate piece that you can either texture later or, you know what I mean, yeah. or get lots of details. Yeah, it's okay now for what you did. I think it's great. There's a lot of, this is, by the way, a very powerful silhouette in there. And just another idea at you. What if, because... We do this when we paint all the time. We flip our images and look at the composition in the other way. Yeah. What if this became the front of the ship here? And then you have these large, threatening... Oh, like, it's like... Yeah, see that? What happens if you made that front of the ship in there? Yeah. It's be like, like, it's very, see how ferocious that is? Yeah. It's like, wrong with these huge wings coming forward. You can do that, you know? Man, sometimes you take your design. Sometimes we're our own, not, not, how do I say this? We're our own worst enemy in terms of we're, we're a little precautious sometimes. So I think that's the great thing about when you thumbnail and you have happy accidents or you thumbnail by using um, something you wouldn't normally do, like taking a thumbnail, copying and pasting, inverting it, and then turning it another way, you come up with a different design. Right now, looking at your reverse view, and I come in here and want to put this, this shape in here, it makes that look very menacing. You know, so that's another possible look. Imagine you come back here, and then you erase some of this. That's no longer the front. That's just a piece that hangs off, and then you have this huge 
massive canopy shape with these wings. The cockpit is actually separate. Yeah, okay. Try try maybe leaving something there like that and then putting that huge cockpit in there and seeing what it looks like. You might have a whole other design to run with. Yeah. That's what's cool is that, you know, that's the great thing I love about designing is you come up with all these other ideas, you know, that you can easily work from. Sometimes you have to flip and go the opposite. That's why I mentioned that when we're drawing too. If you get stuck, stop what you're doing. If you keep repeating the same shapes, the same description, the same visual language, stop what you're doing and go the 100% opposite other direction. Yeah. I do that with my environments all the time. I get stuck, I'm doing the same thing, and I have to just go, uh-uh, this way. And then I end up with a better design that way. Um, a lot of artists that I like, I've seen Scott Robertson talk about you know, you get stuck on like making a plate or design for somebody's armor, and so he just comes up with something that he normally wouldn't have thought of, some type of geometric pattern, he throws it on it, bam, you come up with a whole other design you would never have thought of. Nothing wrong with going in that direction. Nice job, though. Okay? All right. Let's take a look here. X, see what you got. All right, X, you're going for, you have this type of, you're having a vehicle that flies. It's going to have a jet mode. And it's going to be able to come up in like a wasp, mono, wasp mode and hover. And then it's going to have this, some type of tail or missile system that then comes down and, and then does damage, right? Okay. Um, one thing that I notice when I look at this that I think is really significant and that makes us so fearful, two things. Or one are the claws that are in here. Okay. They feel like long razors. And the other thing that I'm noticing as well is, turn that off, is that this huge, massive back that almost feels like it's filled with poison and all kinds of nastiness, right? So when I come over and look at your design, most of your mass is up here in the front of the plane with smaller mass back here. So I'm wondering, what if you found a way to basically mimic some of the smaller mass up in the front, get those large wing structures that are holding the sky together. Okay, so what if this, the other thing too is look, that's sort of at a, a 90 right there, right? When you look at that in the insect, what is it doing? It's at a massive angle difference in its body. It's almost like this. Okay, so, and I know that might be, you know, right now on its curve, but what if you were to angle this down a little bit more? find a way to get that in here and then what if you ended up making this canopy area maybe a little bit smaller at an angle but then when we get down maybe the wings that are hooked up to some mechanism so they could spin become much larger okay and then this element that comes down and turns is a much heavier larger element maybe we could see missile holes whatever that might be in there and it comes down and this thing like locks up bends forward and then it's just, you know. But look at what I did right there. I made the canopy at more of an angle. I made the wings larger to support the weight. And then I just broadened this out to make it a lot fatter like what you're seeing right down here in your reference. Okay, so I'm trying to mimic what's in the reference. My only concern about this right now is before I look at this one, looking at the shapes of this to that, it feels almost like an escape pod. Like you would jump in it and you're just sort of like, pfft, because it has the smaller wings on it. So when I look at smaller wings, um, I now here's a catch: is it fast vehicles sometimes have slope back wings, so they have less drag, right? So not I just would find a way. To me, when I'm looking at this, I'm seeing an attack vehicle that's coming in to do damage. So I'm thinking it would have that type of sensibility, where maybe if the you know the front is angled, not so straight. Okay, this is pitched, so from a side view, we're in here basically seeing some of what you have there. The side view might be something more like this. Does that make sense? Yeah. Instead of being straight across. So this might be angled, might be a little bit smaller, then you have this large. And, and that might be a payload system that when it's lined up and straight, it's like very massive. And then the, even the shape of that could be something that's more like from a front view. That payload system might be like this. Or even better yet, earlier today we were looking at some triangular shapes that were pretty cool. I meant this to be thinner or thicker, but 
but maybe it's thicker down here and then it gets a little thinner and it's offset, it's more like this type of thing. So it's like more area down here than here. But what I'm getting at is that this area down here doesn't have to be a square. It can be some type of cool offset of like missiles and as this thing comes in, that tail end moves up and deploys. But I still want to enhance the silhouette. I would still come over here on these large wings and I would like to see like, you know, maybe there's some type of round system in here that's a jet system that's holding this together. Now I notice in here you, you did this right here. Oh, I see what, oh, you know what? I just couldn't see it in this drawing here. These are the thrusters here, right? Yeah. That are angling with it. That was sort of hard to see when it's in this position because it's turned, right? Um, with the tail in there, I actually thought that was part of the tail for a minute in that point of view. So what if we did this? What if you ended up bringing that wing out to here and making it larger and then having the thruster system in here? You know what I mean? And then you have the, the tail in there with that angled shape that we had sort of before, like this. And then by pulling the thruster out, now we can see it way over to the side here, and it's going to read better in the silhouette study. See that already? Just having that canopy, the wing a little larger, the thruster coming into the middle there, and then this midpoint that can bend and curve feels a lot more threatening okay, to us versus right here. This is on its way but we're still sort of like just a triangle shape versus this much more enticing, threatening silhouette shape, much longer, more shapes, more points, more angles in there. Okay. All right. That's what I'd go for. Just pushing up a little bit more. All right. Thanks, sir. Okay. Let's see who's next here. Peter and Tito the, the destroyer. Let's do Peter's first. Give me a second, guys. You know, I think we can go another 15, 20 minutes. I want to make sure the recorder doesn't crap out. We're at an hour right now. Yeah, give me a minute. I'm just going to stop it real quick so I can save. All right. Back in business here. Here we go. We've got Peter's up here. Let's take a look at what Peter has. Um, let's see what you have here. So um, there's some really interesting shapes that are happening in here, Peter, um, that are taking place already that I like. There's in you definitely in terms of the silhouette, you have a very nice. I mean, this is not a a high we're here vehicle. You know, this is looks like a fast speedster type of attack vehicle of some kind because of the angular shapes and everything that's taking place. Um, now, it's funny because from here, can you see how that could be a front-end view? Yeah. yeah could, that actually is the front-end view. That is? Yeah. Because I thought that I was know, I thought that was the front-end view. because I flipped it, and it could work either way. It could. And that was one of the first things I noticed about this is that this looks like a front-end view with a, with a pair of prongs coming at me. So. Well, that's what we got to do now is what I, this is what I, one of the things I would recommend is, is I would come in and really define what is happening in the cockpit and where it is. So if this is your front end, I would come in here and make this area, however you want to design that cockpit, a little bit more noticeable in here as a cockpit and not as, there's a difference now between that and what's there. Does that make sense? Because even if I come in here and if I take this and copy it, and I come back to this other point of view right here. And if I paste that, let me transform it. See what I'm getting at? Yeah. That even that would feel more, you know, we need that definition right there. So what, what overall the comment I was going to give to you is you, you need more detail on this guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and so what I mean by that detail, it's going to be this little finessing of, of exactly what that cockpit looks like, how it feels, how it attaches. Is there a base down here? Is there a little light underneath? Is there a little element? There's roundness right here. Some of that isn't happening in your stuff right now. I'm getting this sort of ant, ant line feel. And it almost looks like plating. You can use that idea, but think about when I, I think of plating, plating covers something to protect it, right? 
So think of having a cockpit shape that could be in here like this, that's very defined, that they can see through, all right? And then maybe there's some type of this plating on top of it with another piece of plating or that goes around it. See what I'm getting at? It's defining, and that's one of the things when I first looked here that I noticed is I felt like there were lots of elements to this that were very smooth, 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 and even this, that is that copied and put over there, right? Define this up as its own system. Make that like a wing that comes out, it's connected to another piece that's modeled that then connects, you know? Um, the other thing on the thruster, right? Yeah, really good shape. The silhouette, the overall silhouette shape and feel to it's great. Now I just want to push it another five or 10%. Those don't feel like thrusters. They feel like a little, I don't know, like a little popcorn shooter or something. They yeah, feel like these little, like, I, I kind of just put them there, like <laughs> you know what they remind me of? Those things you pull, you pull the string on and they explode or whatever. Yeah. Those little pop favors. They're so small and round. Anything small and round is going to have a cute feel. Round and happy shapes, right? That's not what that, sh that ship's going to have. It's not going to have round down. It's like, hold on a minute. Hi, you're here. Let me, you know. Surprise, right? No, that thing should be like menacing. It's, it's something else too is I felt like all of this is very pushed together and then this is even sort of pushed together in there. So I, I, when I was looking at this, I had the feeling of like opening it up a little bit. Okay, okay? and this is what I meant by that is imagine if this body did this, right? That arched up more. Then a little connector piece came out then you had something like this, like that. You see what I just did? Yeah, I just put a piece in here. Look at this to open this area up in here okay. and let it breathe a little bit. You know, it's just so like it's like squashed in there. And if I if I let it breathe a little bit, that's going to enhance the silhouette shape a little bit more. And look, I could almost do it like this. Hold on, let me see what Photoshop magic I might have left. Here, I'm going to actually do it in this view. I want to show you the difference real quick. Select all, brush, fill, OK. Come here. I'm going to just take this out. Not quite sure if I like that shape right now, but see what that does? It opens it up a little bit more. See what I'm getting at? Pulls pulls the wings out a little bit. Now I'm like, hold on a minute. Now now I'm on a roll. Right? I want to put something in an angle like that, going that way. See how that opened it up a little bit more? It's just made it breathe and now the wings feel like they could still bend and, and, and change in shape but it just opens this up and then even if you came over here and just sort of I still want to just hold on let me see if I can do this I'm gonna, uh, what was I going to do I'm going to copy that deselect Hold on. One second, I 
redo. There we go. I meant to go down to the base here. Okay. I was like the cockpit. See what it does for a scale? Like this little cockpit and this, this part extends up and back more. It just feels more menacing to me than where we sort of started at. Okay. Um, I'd make, these look like they'd be cool for like some type of blaster or something. They're like above each other, like they get some type of resonating energy beam and then it shoots it. Yeah, that, that's cool. I like that. But then you got to be careful. It feels like there's thrusters there. You know, so I'd, I'd, I'd adjust that shape a little bit. I just, to me, that's so like, you know, it, it's not bad. It's a good design. It actually makes me feel like if you're battling uh, a group of, uh, a colony of aliens and they had droids that came out, that feels like a droid ship. Yeah. They'd be droid controlled. They'd be like, vroom, 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 like a hundred of them all coming out. And they'd be like, vroom, vroom, like all spinning at the same time and trying to hit you. But it doesn't quite have that fighter feel, and I think that's what you're going for, right? You're. Cl I, had, I had like I was stuck between like fighter and just kind of like drone. Okay, it ha does have that drone feel, but I'm wondering just to play up if we push the yeah. shapes up a little bit, or maybe even if the wings just sort of did this. Maybe if the wings even just came out to here, and oops, uh, I'll, I'll figure it out. or something more. Yeah, just pushing up the wings more. It's going to make them feel. What I like about that is that almost feels like a boomerang. You can like huck and yeah. throw and stick at somebody versus this is a little bit more like a little Chinese star or something. You know what I mean? So I don't know. I just push up the shape, see what you come up with. Yeah, sure. Might take you on another path. Okay, cool. Yeah. And definitely those engines, you know, oh, yeah. they, you know what? It just hit me what they feel like. They make little, my daughter has lip balm in a little container like that. And it's like, you know, it's like, <laughs> you know what that little lip balm? You wanted to feel like it's this massive engine that's just pff, sucking in air and you know spilling out pollutants, right? Not really pollutants, but energy and okay. All right, let's go to Tito. Tito the Destroyer. All right, cool. Let's see what we got here. All right, Tito. I think this is a really fun shape right here that you have. What are you going for? It feels like a personal ship, ship that's used for like maybe high council or, you know, or a, or an individual's personal ship that's made just to transport. Doesn't feel like it has any real defensive capabilities. More maybe some offensive traits, but it's just more of like a zoom around type. Feels like a president or a senator would fly that. It's like the the Bugatti of ships or something, or the you know what a Bugatti is. I got my Buka. Okay, For, uh, Ferrari, then type of vehicle, right? So a couple little adjustments. Um, things that I like, things that I dislike. Um, I'm not a big fan of this organic thing you have going in the back there. It feels organic, and I don't know if you're meaning it to be. These almost look like tentacles. Which part? Yeah. This part here. Uh, yeah, yeah. They almost feel like octopus tentacles. And it pulls away from the design of what's happening. And, and I think this is really fun here. And what I, something I notice about this, you do have that at a little bit of a slant. I like this. This is a nice, oops. Um, I think that's a really fun design there too as well. It's working. Hold on, I lost my red by accident. I'm not paying attention. There we go. Okay, so you have some good elements in here. I like the center line. I like the way, look at this. Is, these are all pros here. Look it up how you're dividing up space here, and then it's like thinner here, then you get much thicker here. With even the feet of this, almost the same distance from here to here, you can even make them a little bit longer if you wanted to, 
or they could be a little bit shorter, you know. Um, and so, I mean, there's a lot of good things happening. I love the angle in here. I like these counter angles. You have a nice angle that's taking place in there. You have some other cool secondary angles that are happening here. I think that's very successful. When you get to here, you have lost part of that angle you had, and you have become a 90. You've given me a flying 90-degree triangle used in construction, right? Uh -huh. And that's what you want to avoid. And that's really as easy as almost doing this. So I go back to your design, okay? Your design is not doing that. It's Look at that. If your design was doing that, look at the difference. I just held shift there and drew a straight line down. Your design is much more at a tilt. And then not only that, but even technically your body, oops, your body is at a tilt this way. See that? And then you have that angle in here, which is massive, and then that angle. So you have a lot of other shapes that are being represented in there that when we get to your, your rough model, they're sort of being lost. So I would get this, you know, I think one thing just looking at it, I almost want to pull this out a little bit more. I want to angle this here. I want to pull this back. Uh, dump the organics in here and just stick hard edged and just do a nice simple ships. The organics get too involved with like, is it human, is it octopus? It's just too complex, yeah, yeah. right? Just stick with basics, hard edged wing shapes. You know, you come in here, look back at your sketch, right? Look, you have this shape that came up here, that's great. You have this that comes out here, maybe you decide to throw in another element that pops in here to give it a little bit more pizzazz. Maybe you decide to make a little thruster that comes out here that you can see. Now we're starting to really develop a really fantastic, you already have it in this sketch. I just want to translate this into here. So when this comes here, also, by the way, drawing on that, I meant to create a layer. Look at the difference variations here. Your sketch here, the distance from there to there is very close. Then you get this wing guy that comes up, right? Yeah. Here, you're like massive, yeah. a lot bigger distance. That's distorting the energy in your design. So look at those little marks. I mean, what I would think is, look, you come here, you get that shape up in here like this. You get that secondary shape coming in here. Then you have this cool angle that's coming in here. This comes forward, angles off a little bit, and then maybe that pitches at an angle like so. Look at that right there. That's a night and day difference. Yeah. And that's just moving a couple angles. Maybe we see part of a, a thruster system that's in the back here. This just looks like something I was just doing in my sketchbook, too. I could show you. See, this is all great. And then, you know, you get that. And then you might decide to come in here, you know, if that lands there. You know, you got to decide maybe from this view then, if that wing comes out, maybe it's not just a straight wing but a wing that goes this way, like that, and that, that angles. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That way, now it can land, because yeah. it has two supports. Um, so I would just watch. I would, I would go back. I think there's a lot of energy that's taking place inside your little sketch here, then your, in your silhouette study, and here and here that I'm not getting transferred into this, OK? Even that's just still, it's like, it looks like a hammer face. It's like it's just a hammer, it's flat, and just I'm not getting that read out of here. This has angles in it, it has curves, it looks like, look, you have this like cool low angle here that then goes up, and then it's like a high angle, sort of pitches down. That's a great little shape. That's not right here, it's just too, too square, too flat in there, okay? Yeah. So I think if you dump the organic, get some more of these little curves in here that are happening, you'll be in a much better position, and you'll see the the design really start to come alive. Okay? okay. All right, good stuff, sir. Thank you. All right, my pleasure. All right, that's it. That wraps up. Anyone else didn't put their work in there? Nope. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and end the demo then. Thanks, guys. Good job on these. I know when you're roughing your stuff out sometimes, it's still rough and you need to define it, but I, I really like what's, uh, what's happening here. So uh, good, good work, guys.